Welcome to part two of the mechanics of sleeping dogs. Last time we looked at the melee combat and gunplay, sleeping dogs really raised the bar for melee combat in an open world, which was then copied by no one. Let's take a look at food. Ice cream. A couple years ago, I was playing Watch Dogs 2 and came across a backyard patio and barbecue. It was evening and I thought, oh, too bad there's nothing to do here. Such a great location and no mechanics to interact with it. Then of course, I came to my senses. What would I do with it? Throw a party? Put up umbrellas? Press F to make a burger? I think I just figured out why Ubisoft didn't spend time coding those features. What's the point? When you're busy saving the world, who's got time for food if the player can't even enjoy the flavor? Have a good party. Well, five years before Breath of the Wild and two years before Watch Dogs, food had a purpose in Sleeping Dogs. Drinking Dragon Kick Soda gave way a fairly long damage boost. Buying tea gave way reduced damage in combat, especially valuable for new players. Watch and out. buying food from street vendors gave way health regeneration. You know, that mechanic every game has automatically. In Sleeping Dogs, you gotta eat your Wheaties. <laughs> Seriously, that's the best you can do. One other observation. Notice how vendors hand weigh food and it transfers hands. It's not smooth, but at least they bothered. It's hard to animate handoffs, which is why most games get around it by keeping the exchange out of frame. Here, as promised. But not Sleeping Dogs. Kudos. In the last video, I mentioned cars were useful for environmental attacks. They also get you around town. So I imagine the devs ask, what else could cars do? By holding the e-brake, space bar, cars can do donuts and pivot on the spot. Three years before Mad Max, Sleeping Dogs had a ramming feature for disabling other cars. If you had a gun, or you're in a shooting segment of the game, Wade drives and shoots at the same time and goes into bullet time while firing. And just to make sure we didn't forget the game's kung fu movie inspirations, Wade can jump from his car and hijack another. You can perform this trick as part of missions or for no reason at all. Anytime, any car. Way can also open the door while driving to tag pets. I found no use for this feature, but it's there. Sometimes you have to hack security cameras using a kind of mastermind puzzle. Then identify a drug dealer. They could have made it more challenging, but at least it adds variety. There are lockboxes all around the city, waiting for me to loot them for cash. Some of them are locked and need to be cracked. Not great, but variety. Occasionally locks need to be picked. Occasionally bugs need to be planted. Occasionally signals will need to be triangulated and traced. My point is that nothing is as simple as just pressing E meaning everything I do feels like I'm doing it. And here's something I've never seen in a game before, a practice dojo. So many games provide upgrades and new moves with no more than a textual explanation of what it does and how to execute it. Maybe a short video if I'm lucky. Trying to figure out a new move in a fight is suicide. Wait, what do I do now? Well, that wasn't it. Sleeping Dogs has a dojo where you can practice all moves against all four enemy types with invulnerability. Could have used that in Jedi Fallen Order because it's not about knowing the buttons, it's about muscle memory. Leveling in Sleeping Dogs is really interesting. 
Most games award generic points players can spend on a skill tree. In Sleeping Dogs, different activities earn points in five different areas. Since Wei is an undercover cop, there are cop missions, like sniping hostage takers, the suspect is down. disabling cars, and arresting the occupants, and shootouts at store robberies. Cop upgrades include being able to get shotguns from police cars, increased ramming damage, and a Slim Jim for breaking into cars without setting off the alarm. Since he's infiltrating the triads, triad missions are most of the story missions. They unlock perks like reduce damage from melee attacks, melee weapon attacks, and custom attacks while sprinting with melee weapons. Helping people and winning street races increases Way's street cred, what the game calls face. Face points unlock a valet that will bring your car on demand, food effects last longer, and discounts on cars and clothes. Want to unlock all those cool kung fu moves in fights? Recover your trainer's stolen jade zodiac statues scattered around the city. One new move per statue. This is the most powerful move of all. Pay attention. And to increase the health bar, it doesn't come from leveling. It comes from finding and meditating at the health shrines throughout the city. All 50 of them to fully double your health. A little grindy? Maybe, but look at the variety. Money from lockboxes, health from shrines, strength, toughness, and regen from food. This is a world I have to interact with in different ways to level up in different ways. Plus, occasionally NPCs will dump out their old water. Touches like that really gave sleeping dogs a sense of place. Then comes the point where I can buy a map that shows where everything is located. Oh wait, no, that's, that's every other game. To get the health shrines to appear on the map, you have to date... My name's Amanda. Amanda Cartwright. My least favorite activity in the game? Karaoke singing. With my hair fall, a kind of slow guitar hero. But you'll do it if you want to date Tiffany Kim. Which you do if you want to unlock all the locations of the Jade Zodiac statues. Which you do if you want to unlock all of Wave's combat moves. Also... Dating Not Ping reveals all the security camera locations. Dating Ileana reveals the locations of all the lockboxes. And Dating Sandra unlocks races in Victoria's Peak. Why? Because it's different, that's why. And here's a small thing. Those bloody footprints, that's actually where I walked in the room. They built a bloody footprint path trail for one scene. Amazing. And I'm done. A look at the mechanics of Sleeping Dogs and what makes the game different. Some would say special. A reason to eat. Cars that are more than just transportation. Five different upgrade trees, each tied to different world activities. Tasks that require more than pressing E. And a reason to date the ladies that isn't just for points. Plus, it looks really good for a 10-year-old game. Especially on rainy nights. Thanks for watching.